too many men have rushed against that bear defense. That's the difference. I made a note here that the Bears have defense Montgomery very well, whereas Peyton has also been effective catching the football. I would think that with Gary Fensick banged up and out of the defense for the Bears, we will see whether Jaworski can exploit that gap in the yeah. Chicago defense. One other interesting thing, Ben, is that uh, the Eagles earlier in the ball game gave Phipps quite a bit of time to throw. Now the last three minutes or so, they had a better rush on him. So uh, if Phipps has the time to throw, he can hurt any defense. He won't throw many interceptions, and he'll throw to the proper receiver. Well, right now, there will be considerable pressure on Ron Jaworski as he tries to bring the Eagles back. And Bob Thomas kicking to the deep man, Wally Henry. He'll take it at the 4. To the 15, to the 25. Spun around and still going. Fumble picked up by the Eagles, however. And it would be Jerry Robinson, the middle linebacker, number 56, who saved the bacon for Wally Henry and the Eagles with a clutch recovery oh. of that fumble. There's that first round draft choice, yeah. and he pays off again. Big recovery here. Here's Wally Henry returning up the middle. He, he was hooked by Harris. Right. That's why he spun. Now he's hooked once more, and the fumble caused by Bruce Heron, number 51. And then Jerry Robinson recovered. The Philadelphia fans now exhorting the Eagles to come back. It is first and 10 on the Eagle 34. Carmichael goes right, Smith left, Harris and Montgomery behind Jaworski. Harris, even though he was hit at the line of scrimmage, still made the play. Alan Page hit him head up. As far as the quarterbacks are concerned, you can see seven out of 10 for Jaworski, seven out of 15 for Phipps, only three yards difference in yardage. What that doesn't show is a bomb dropped by Ricky Watts for a touchdown. And of course the pass interference in the end zone that set up a big one. So it is second and seven on the 37 for the Eagles. going over the middle and it's no good it was intended for Crefley Tom Hicks was there to break it up and you know what has taken place on first down and this last down is that the Bears have defensed you can't see it here number 17 Carmichael I, I, on both plays and now Jaworski has to go now watch they've done this they're rotating up he's jammed First Schmidt got him. They run with him. Now he's covered deep by the free safety. So he's he's covered long and short. Takes away the screen. Third and seven on the 37 for the Eagles, and they go slot left. Hanfield is in there now with Montgomery. And Fitzky is wide right. Jaworski going down the left sideline. No good for Carmichael. And right there was Doug Plank. Well. They, they jammed Carmichael again on that. Carmichael came back. Here he is. Carmichael came back on the ball. You say he dropped it, but it was, it was a good play by Carmichael to come back and get it. He was well covered. If you are a trivia buff, the answer to the question, who caught Joe Namath's last pass? It was Doug Plank. It was an interception. And the punt end over end, and Walterscheid will let it roll to the 20-yard line, and it's going to roll down to the Bear 15 with John Shara eyeballing it along with Chesley. Well, he, he faked the pass on that. It was a planned play because if it weren't, there'd been somebody downfield. Here it is. There would have been somebody downfield illegally. Also got clipped, but long after. Yeah. As you can see, him going flat. A reminder: a holiday edition of the CBS Sports Spectacular, the speed of sound. The U.S. Men's Gymnastics Team will also have World Ice Skating Champions and Country Classic Celebrity Bowling. That's next Saturday, the holiday edition of the CBS Sports Spectacular. So the Bears have it first and ten on the Bear 15, and the Eagle offensive unit waiting to get their hands on the football again. Back in there with Dave Williams. And it'll 
will be Peyton with Williams out in front. A flag on the play, and Peyton is out in the open. To midfield. Still going as he got away from Jerry Robinson. Herman Edwards still trying to drag him down. And uh, Herman Edwards got him back inside the one. There's but a there's flag. a flag on, flag the, play. on the play. Chief. Illegal motion against the Bears will nullify the play. Well, it was an 85-yard blowout. Both of those good guards pulling, leading the play. Good blocking. Jerry Robinson will get a hand on him, but that's not enough. Shara is blocked out of it by Watts, and good finally Herman Edwards has him by the collar. And a good straight arm by Peyton. And it's you all know, for naught. Man, we've, we've said this on every, every week this year. Illegal motion, number 84 on the offense, moving forward at the snap, first down. This year, with every ball club in the league, shifting, using motion, everybody's doing what, what Dallas has done for years. Every ball game we've seen an Ill, illegal motion penalty and many times it's a big play that could turn the game around. Here's an example. And it's not a factor in the play at all. Mike Phipps trying to keep a poker face because first he had Watts drop an apparent touchdown. Now he has an 85-yard run by Peyton called back. Brian Bashnagel was guilty of the illegal motion. It's first and 15 from the 10. And here's Williams. Well, you see... The Bears are, are doing very smart. The first series on offense and the first series on defense in the third quarter are vital. But the Bears are doing what, what got them in the playoffs. They're doing what they do best, run the football. That sweep by Peyton is one of his four favorite plays. It was run perfectly. The motion man was not a factor, but it was an illegal motion. He was moving forward. Willie McClendon out, and Walter Payton back into the ball game for the Bears. They have it second and 12 on their own 13-yard line. Watts goes wide left, Bashnagel wide right. Payton is the deep man out of the eye. Walter Payton with Williams trying to block, but there are too many green shirts, and Payton gets to the 15. Somebody lost a pad they were hitting so hard, and Jerry Robinson throws it off the field. Well, Peyton's back in after that long run. He rested one play. It's a weak toss from the eye formation. It's not a real good play, sound football play to, to pick up yardage weak side. But it's a good counter play so the, de the defense can't overshift and, and play your strong side tendencies. Third and 10 on the 15-yard line. That's where Peyton broke it, but it was called back from the 15. draw to Dave Williams and he is grabbed from behind by Reggie Wilkes and number 51 Reggie Wilkes made the play and if you're a basketball fan yeah. you might remember he's a cousin to Jamal Wilkes of the Lakers and even on that third and ten the Eagles defense was overshifted playing Peyton defensing Peyton in case he ran a strong side sweep the well, Bob Parsons is in to punt going deep Wally Henry standing on the Eagles 40. Bears 17, Eagles 10, 11-29 left in the third quarter. Parsons gets it away unmolested, and Henry has to retreat to his own 35. And he is stacked up at about the 38-yard line, and among others, Doug Buffone was on the top. Double fives in there to help on the tackle. So with 11 minutes and 13 seconds left in the third quarter, Bears 17, Eagles 10. You'll say they have the ball first and 10 on their own 39 with the Bears leading Philadelphia 17 to 10. Carmichael goes wide left, Smith wide right. And Crepley, the tight end, is on the right side. Harrison Montgomery behind Jaworski. trying to lead Carmichael, well, but the pass is deflected and knocked out of bounds. Alan Page, who had recovered a Jaworski fumble earlier, is the man who got a meat hook in the way of that pass. And then the reason why is, again, what we talked about the last series, 
the defense rotated up and took away the screen pass to Carmichael. I don't know whether we can see it, but that's why Jaworski hesitated in throwing it to him because the defensive back was right there. That's the middle linebacker, Jerry Robinson, who has done a solid job today, particularly assigned to Walter Payton. Banged up his right forearm being ministered to. Second and 10 on the Eagle 39. Intercepted by Alan Ellis at the 35. Ellis to the 40, to the 45. Still on his feet to about the Eagle 40 yard line. And Alan Ellis makes the interception and that snaps a Jaworski string. And the fans are disgusted and somewhat mutinous at this stage as well, we take another look. Jaworski has the time to throw. He's well covered here. He's not he's not open. You see that? That was flanked to deflected right. it into Ellis's hand. He was expecting the receiver to continue over more. Deflected ball for a big play. But number one in the NFC in interceptions with 29. Right. In fact, they had 22 in their last eight games. And now Ellis comes up with a big interception for Chicago. First and 10 on the Eagle 40. Bashnagel right and Watts left. Bashnagel in motion. And here comes Peyton. He has Sorry and Williams blocking. And is knocked out of bounds by Bobby Howard and Jerry Robinson. There is Alan Ellis who came up with the big intercept. Ellis, six years out of UCLA, so you hear about the UCLA connection and all yeah. of the players who played for Dick Vermeil. Here's a man from UCLA who's trying to ruin it and save it for Chicago. He replaced uh, Virgil Livers, and that's the most interceptions that the Bears have had since George Halas' World Championship team of 63. And I guess it is really a tribute to the fact that they're so tough on the rushing game. And there is Gary Fensick. As you can see, he's finished for the day left knee the ligaments damaged and he no doubt is out for the remainder of the year williams bumping into charlie johnson you want to see what goes on in the pitch charlie johnson and center dan neal of chicago were head to head like two big stags so the runner just ran into their battle and that was the end Williams coming right into it. There's Neil 52 on his knees. Johnson has already turned and Jerry Robinson goes after him once the play had broken at the line of scrimmage. Robinson covers a lot of ground. He's got speed and quickness and there is a difference. Third and three on the Eagle 33. 17 to 10 Bears. 10 minutes left in the third quarter. Play action fake to Peyton. Intended for Ricky Watts and broken yeah. up nicely by Herman Edwards. Yeah, nice, a nice job of covering. The play took a little longer to develop. Rick, Ricky, Rots, Ricky Watts ran a good pattern. He has to wait too long to get the ball. The timing was off. That's why it was broken up. Bob Thomas has come in with the ball spotted at the 33-yard line. Thomas's longest field goal of the year, 44, and during the regular season, he was 16 for 27. You might remember earlier, he kicked a 30-yard field goal. The hold by Bashnagel at the 40. So this will be a 50-yard field goal attempt. High snap. It is deep and no good. And remember, the line of scrimmage is the 33. It the kick was long enough. Watch the high snap here. That threw him off just a little bit. He spun the laces, so the laces were facing the goal line. The ball was long enough. He usually doesn't kick that long. Nine fifty-three left in the third quarter. Seventeen to ten Bears. The line of scrimmage was the Eagle 33. That's where they put it in play. Harris and Montgomery behind Jaworski. Carmichael is wide left and Smith goes right. Play action fake to Montgomery. And Jaworski releasing to Montgomery and Gary Campbell dropped him as he crossed the 40-yard line. Yeah. Well, Jaworski went play action from the eye on first down. Good, good fake. 
And Montgomery checks through, which is tough coverage. Gar Gary Campbell comes over and from the weak side, the offside, makes the play. Here's Barry Campbell talking to his defense. He's a defensive coordinator. He used to be with the Rams at Atlanta. Second and two on the Eagle 41. They picked up eight yards on that pass, and now here goes Montgomery, and he bumped into Alan Page and made the first down as he bounced off Page's right shoulder and fell into the arms of Jerry Muckenstern. Just enough for the first down. We've been talking about how the Bear defense has stopped Montgomery. Wendell Tyler of the Rams is the only player to gain 100 yards versus the Bears in the last 11 games of the season. And of course, Wilbert Montgomery is only the fourth player in NFL history to gain 2,000 yards from scrimmage by a rushing and passing. He's in the illustrious company of Brown, Simpson, and Payton. First and 10 from the 44. To Carmichael, and he makes the reception and goes to the 41-yard line. Alan Ellis. Yeah. Chopped down the tree at the 41. Now this this is a counter for what the Bears are doing on defense. Play action, sent Carmichael on a fast goal, slant type of pattern, big target. He likes to come over the middle. Good call, good execution. That's the type of play they scored their touchdown on. Well, first and ten, the ball now on the Bear 40-yard line. Slot right, Carmichael inside Smith. Montgomery with Harris blocking on right. A good nose-to-nose -nose block by Leroy Harris on Doug Plank, and that made the play go for a good five yards. Well, they're in a slot formation. They're running to the weak side, the tight end side. Watch the block by... Harris on plank, an inside out block, made the game possible. The Bears do a tremendous job of pursuing. The way they're pursuing has been a gadget, a reverse type of play, some sort of a comeback play could be effective. Second and three from the Bear 33. The drive started on the Eagle 33. Wilbert Montgomery, and he is across the 30-yard line, picking up the first down, and the Eagles are alive. Mike Hartenstein making the tackle, and the fans have come alive. Nothing like a few first downs to bring the fans back. Now, that play that they got the first down on is the same play that Walter Payton has been running. It's an M. Hunch play. The lead back goes through the hole, picks up anybody, usually the linebacker, and the ball carrier follows him. First and ten on the Bear 29, and the Eagles slot right again. The rest of it going to Carmichael. Touchdown! The play action weak side. Carmichael beat beat Ellis completely. You know that means Carmichael now has caught ten touchdown passes in his last nine games. You know I think Ellis was looking into the backfield, Ben. You know that he was looking into the backfield at the play action. Big point now. Shara holding high snap. The kick is up. The kick is good. And with six minutes and 52 seconds left in the third quarter, we're back to square one. The Chicago Bears, 17, and the Philadelphia Eagles, 17, in the madhouse that is Veteran Stadium. Eagles off, Eagles off the ground to tie the Bears, and Veteran Stadium now has really come alive. It was in the basement on the Ellis interception, but the Eagles have moved back to the penthouse now as they kick off, and it'll be Bashnagel to the 25, 30, 35, 40, and it was Tony Franklin who had to throw a body block along with John Spagnola to bring him down. It's a short kick. You know, Bashnagel can do it all. Bashnagel's the type of guy, then, that, that isn't as fast as you want. He's not as big as you want. He might not be as strong. 
but he gives you 110 percent. And remember, if the Bears come up short, it'll be Bashnagel who will be spending all winter thinking about that illegal procedure penalty that nullified a Peyton touchdown, even though they got down and got close and missed a field goal later on. The first and ten on the Bear 43. Peyton with Bunting and Robinson on top of him, bringing him down as he got out beyond the 47-yard line. And that's the same, the same play that was called back because of illegal motion. Strong side sweep. Both guards pulling Peyton, following his blockers. So they'll spot the ball at the 48, where it is second and five for the Bears. And the crowd is chanting defense, defense. Willie McClendon now comes in to give Peyton a breather. 17 all, 6-14 left in the third quarter. Bashnagel right, blocks left. Willie McClendon following Dave Williams. And he's very close to the first down. You know, by the way, with all the spotlight attention, and deservedly so, on Walter Payton and Wilbert Montgomery, I think it would be only right to congratulate two fellows who do the hard-nosed blocking, Dave Williams and Leroy Harris. They've yes. done a marvelous job. They, they have, and uh, you, you need that type of guy, a, a player that will stay in the background and, and, and give credit to the tailback. You know, the, the Eagles that last down went to a four-man line. Well, we'll measure for the first down. It was second and five. They have to get to the 48-yard line. It would appear as if they might be inches. No, in fact, almost a foot. No, they're that much, said Red Cashin. They took out Kyle Harrison to go to a four-man line, figuring it's a little bit stronger against the run and also a better pass rush in case they throw the ball. So it's third. And about a foot. The man they call Big Bird in Chicago, Robin Earl, number 39, is in there. He's 6'5 and 240. Last time we had this situation, Phipps went play action. Robin Earl is on a wing outside the tight end, Greg Latta. McClendon and Williams are behind Phipps. Cobb is a tight end on the left side, and Phipps on a sneak has the first down. So Mike Phipps went towards Robin Earl and Greg Laddish side and got the first down. There you see Robin uh, Earl slanting in to take care of Jerry Robinson. Well, Robin Earl's 240, and they got two tight ends in there. That's that's a good safe play. A good play by Earl to take care of Jerry Robinson because otherwise Robinson might have been able to meet Phipps head on. So the Big Bird made a contribution, and it is first and ten on the Eagle 46. Both backs release. And Phipps going deep to Bashnagel, oh. and he led him too much. He had him open, just overthrew him. That was a touchdown. For Mike Phipps, that's the third time that he has seen one get away. You remember, he threw wow. one to watch, and he dropped it. Then he had Peyton go there apparently 85, and it was called back. And now with his man wide open, he just leads Brian Bashnagel wow. a little too much. Then when you're thrown to Bashnagel, then you're thrown to Ricky Watts. Watts is a racehorse. Bashnagel doesn't have that type of speed. There's a tendency to overthrow one or the other. Neil Armstrong sending in the plays with his tight end. It's second and 10 on Eagle 46. Bashnagel in motion. Pass over the middle to Bashnagel, and he gets across the 40, but not enough for the first down. He had to get to the 36, and he'll spot it at the 37. Frank LeMaster made an important tackle that time. Earlier, we said Bashnagel in the clutch. He runs good routes. He's got good hands. He's tough. He won't make mistakes, and that's what a quarterback wants to do. He doesn't want to throw an interception or have a, a ball incomplete because of a lack of execution. Well, on a third and one, once again, Watts and Bashnagel go out. Big Robin Earl comes in on a wing on the right side. And this time, they move him on the left side with Latta. 
We'll see if that means they go left. It's Williams going left, and he's got the first down. So Earl and Latta do a pretty good job, yeah. and they just moved it out, and that time it was Williams getting it to the 35 for the first down. We've got a heck of a ball game. These teams are so evenly matched, man, aren't they? Yeah, they do. And they both have come to play. They're both prepared. Both coaches have done a good job getting them ready. And, and like we said, it's probably going to go right down to the wire. First and 10 on the Eagle 35. Walter Payton is back in there now along with Dave Williams. The back's release. Flipped over the middle to Walter Payton. He's jitterbugging at the 25 and gets down to the 22. Jerry Robinson is on his back and Frank LeMaster at the ankles. First down for the Bears. Well, Phipps had all day to throw here. He wanted to go deeper. And then he takes Peyton on an angle pattern. And Wal Walter always is going forward. That's linebacker coverage, underneath coverage by the Eagle linebackers. And we said earlier that against that 34 defense, Phipps likes to throw to the backs. Neil Armstrong gesturingly, vehemently along the bench. First and 10 on the Eagle 22. Dave Williams. And at the 20 and might have picked up a yard or two. Boy, are they thumping down there now. Frank Lemaster made the tackle. The Bears' tendencies, again, coming into this ball game, when they faced a, a 34 defense, they like to run the ball about 65% of the time and throw to the backs, putting them on those four linebackers. You know, the Bears are the only team in the playoffs that average less than 300 yards per game this year. The league average is about 316. And the Bears only 289. Second and seven on the 19. In motion is Fastnagel. Fitz going to Watts on a screen. Albrecht blocking down as he gets inside the 10-yard line. Lemaster and Herman Edwards. And a good, a good first down call. Ricky Watts is so anxious to get going that he almost ran over his blockers on that play. Ted Albrecht pulled and led the screen. It was a good block by Ted that made it go. So it is first and 10 on the 10. You know, speaking of Ted Albrecht, he had an 11-game streak where he only allowed one sack. So first and goal as they spotted right on the 10. It's Williams with a block by Peyton that did not materialize. Wow. Walter threw a block at Reggie Wilkes, and it was Peyton who bounced off, and Wilkes, number 51, was able to jam it, and Williams goes down. You could see that play had no chance uh, from the start. You know, you see Walter Payton, and if you don't follow him closely enough, you see him throw a block. It should be pointed out, Walter Payton is 204 pounds. Even though he scores and runs so well, he might be a lot bigger than you would think. He's 5'10", 204. But he's got tremendous leg, tremendous leg power. With 50 seconds left in the third quarter, it is second and goal from the nine. Intercepted in the end zone, Bobby Howard, number 23, makes a big interception for the Eagles. If we can see that again. Bobby Howard had outside position all the way. Watch him. Chance to get that in. Bobby Howard, a veteran who has played with San Diego, the New England Patriots, and with the Eagles. He is 34 years old, and boy, did he come up with a big save that time. What a big play that was. First and 10 on the Eagle 20. Second man, Wilbert Montgomery. And he is starting at the 23. Tom Hicks was able to hammer him after Mike Hartenstein got a piece of him going by. You know, when you get down there, Ben, the worst you want to come away with is a field goal. And when you have an interception down in that area, there's a tendency to take it out of you a little bit. 
Now the Bear defense is going to have to pick it up and and uh, not let that bother them. Time running down. Five seconds left in the third quarter. Four, three, two, and counting. And it looks like we will not get another playoff. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Chicago Bears 17, the Philadelphia Eagles 17. And we now pause for a word from your local station. The game is getting wilder. We're in the final quarter, all even at 17, the Bears and the Eagles. You know, these two teams are so evenly matched, it's a shame that one of them has to lose today. Well, they go slot left to the Eagles. And it's second and seven on the 23. And Jaworski will set it up, a little screen. And that's the end of that as Montgomery is just eaten up by Campbell and Hartenstein. Oh. Campbell played him man for man. It was the second back. Uh, Flair, second back screen, and Campbell is right out of no chance. You know, repeat, uh, this is a tremendous game. This is probably the best game we've had a chance to do this year. And as you see, Mike Phipps and Brian Bashnagel talking things over. Remember, the interception was on a pass intended for Bashnagel in the end zone. So they're still talking about that, I'm sure. Well, Phipps is saying I shouldn't have thrown it. with Montgomery. Jaworski with time, and he's going to run. He's to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, and he has picked up a big first down to keep the drive alive. Virgil Livers you know, made the tackle. And what he did, I was thinking to myself, this game is going to go down to the quarterbacks. The difference in the quarterbacks. Now watch. Jaworski used good judgment and run. Now watch him put two hands on the ball just as he's about to be tackled. Now watch that other arm. Look at that. Jaworski, by the way, carried the ball 43 times during the regular season. But he can run and likes to. And he is first and 10 on the Eagle 35. Montgomery Harris a big block on plank I'll yeah. tell you Leroy Harris is knocking yeah. splinters out of plank but I like the way that plank comes across it in because his job is a contained man turn it in let the pursuit the cutback people take care of the of the cutback and that's what happened There's what a punishment bear down on the, on the field and the bear down is Tom Hicks number 54 middle linebacker middle linebacker out of Illinois Plank is, Plank is tough. He has a good name for a defensive player. He sure has. <laughs> and it's all even at 17. And it's left in the game. The Bears 17 and the Eagles 17. Carmichael goes left. Smith goes right. Harris on the wing. to Montgomery. Jaworski over the middle of oh. Crefley. No good. One well, step too far. Now the reason that was open again they defense Carmichael first. Rolled up on Carmichael's side. Play action. And it's a seam pattern. Overthrowing. Dove for it. Landed on his head and shoulder. You know Crefley actually tied Harold Carmichael for the team lead in 30-yard plays. You don't think of a tight end going that deep, but had he caught that one, he would have been yeah. gone for 30. And, and, and the reason, then is that what, what, watch them defense Carmichael. They're coming up and jamming them, and they run with them, and now the tight, tight end will come into the picture. See? Right there. I think as he was coming out of that somersault, he was hit, and that's what happened. He was hit in the forehead, it would appear, just as he was coming up out of the somersault. Doug Plank went flying over him. Then we used to, we used to defense Carmichael. Four out of five plays. Make him throw to somebody besides Carmichael. He's so dangerous, running with the ball, screens, short passes, laying it up in the air, taking it away from a shorter back. Well, Crefley receiving the plaudits of the crowd. He's had a big year. Five years out of Iowa State and shaken up. 
Preply during the regular season caught 41 passes for three touchdowns. And as you said, his seven 30-yard receptions are the most by any tight end in the NFC. So they can't afford to lose him. I think he's all right. I think he'll be back in a play or two. With 12.37 left in the game, they're all even at 17. And it's third and eight on the Eagle 37. Carmichael in a slot right. Fitzky is wide left. And Montgomery is on a wing, but only for the moment. Billy Canfield is in the backfield with Montgomery. Jaworski has Canfield being chased by Muckenstern. And there he goes, Billy Canfield. Touchdown pass to Billy Canfield. Here it is. It's that same shoot pattern we talked about earlier. Good throw. He's, he's covered by the linebacker. He outran the linebacker. Muckenstern and Waldershy couldn't catch him. Ellis didn't have a prayer. And Billy Canfield, two years out of the University of Kansas, comes up with the big reception and the Eagles lead 23-17. Tony Franklin trying to round it off to 24. And he does. You can take a look at Harold Carmichael yeah. and Doug Plank is going to chuck him well, and then Muckenstern will chuck yeah. him and you see Camfield suddenly yeah. came out of there and he had the three steps on Muckenstern and he was off to the race. Almost a pick play in basketball. What we call a pick play. 24-17 Eagles. Ricky Watts, who returned one 83 yards for a touchdown against the Cardinals last week, is the deep man now because Len Walderscheid has to play defense. And it's a short kick, and Watts will take it at the 13 to the 20. And grabbed by Monroe on a uh, big play. Uh, ben, he, he did something that I never wanted my kick return men to do. You stay with your blocking. And when a guy has a little better than average speed, like Watts, there's a tendency to leave the blocking and think you can outrun the end man, and you usually end up with a loss. Henry Monroe, the rookie out of Mississippi State, was right there to grab Watts. Ron Jaworski has passed for 204 yards and three touchdowns now. That last one, 63 yards, although most of it on a run by Campbell. First and ten Bears on their own 22. 12-15 left in the game. In motion is Dave Williams. Walter Payton trying to follow Noah Jackson, and he gets out across the 25-yard line. Well, that touchdown was really a one-on-one -on -one with Camfield on the linebacker. He just outran number 58, Buckerstern. The key, of course, Buckenstern caught up with Harold Carmichael, and that sprung Billy Camfield. Now, the ability to come back when you're behind, that, that's the test of the quarterback here, like Roger Staubach did last week. Tremendous comeback. And, of course, for the Bears, who have had a marvelous comeback, they were three and five halfway. They wound up winning seven of their last eight. So they have come back in them. We'll see. Second and six on the Chicago 26. Pips over the middle to Greg Latta, the tight end, and Reggie Wilkes upended him. He lost the ball, but uh, let's see. They'll take it away from Charlie Johnson. Watch well, that tackle again by Reggie it's, Wilkes. It's a, a delay pattern to, to Latta coming on underneath. Watch, watch him. Watch 88 Latta come across underneath. And now you'll see him catch the ball and get dumped and dropped on his head. Right here. That's called bouncing him. Latta is 235 pounds. Wilkes is 235. There was a standoff in weight. Third and two. The ball is just shy of the 30. Wilkes going to dump it 
to Bashnagel to the 40, upended by Wilkes at the 43, and it's a first down Bears. Again, in the clutch, who does he go to? 84, Brian Bashnagel. During the regular season, Phipps went to Bashnagel 30 times. An underneath pattern, good call, procession type pass. Well, that's a lot of passes for a running team. So it is first and 10 on the Bear 43. Bashnagel in a slot left inside one. Latta, the tight end, is on the right side. In motion is Dave Williams. Walter Payton following Noah Jackson, but he is grabbed at the line of scrimmage. Fumbles, but I believe no. after the whistle. He was down. After the whistle, John oh. Bunny had fallen on the ball. Yeah, that was a good call. No doubt about that. There's John, big man out of North Carolina, coming this, back with knee surgery last you year. You know, one thing about this Bear team, they show a lot of poise. Here they are playing on the road in a tough place to play. It doesn't bother them at all. They're keeping their poise. And it's second and seven on the 46, and there are the opposite coin. It's Dick Vermeil for Philadelphia and Neil Armstrong for the Bears. is on the pass to Peyton and I believe he just dropped it. He well, never did have possession. No. We'll it, see. It never had chance to develop. Phipps had to throw the ball before he was ready. Watch it. The play action faking to, to Peyton 34. Now Peyton checks through but he never had possession of the ball. Jerry Robinson and Claude Humphrey were dogging so they had Phipps all wrapped up. Now let's let's see what he does. Third to seven. Harry Washington, a speedster out of Colorado State, is in there. Now wide right as they go slot right. It is third and seven on the Bear 46. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Well, and the man who has his hands high in the air is Carl Hairston. Number I tell you what. We probably can't see this, but did they ever jam Bashnagel? They knocked Bashnagel so that he was no threat. This is the guy that he really wanted to go to was Bashnagel. You can't see it. He's got time to throw. They took Bashnagel out of the play completely with a good jam. Now Bashnagel comes across too late, and the ball is deflected. So Bob Parsons will be punting, and Wally Henry standing back on his own 13-yard line. Eight minutes and 55 seconds left to go in the game. Parsons gets it away, and Henry coming up to meet it at the 15. And tripped at the 20-yard line. Chris Haynes got him by the shoestrings, and down he goes, just shy of the 20. So the Eagles will put it in play, and Mike Phipps will wait on the sidelines for yet another chance. 24-17 Philadelphia. 24-17 Eagles, 8 minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. And the Eagles have the ball first and 10 on their own 19-yard line. Now, from the Bears' standpoint, they can't give them too many first downs here. they got to stop them, get the ball back, give their offense field position. Montgomery and Harris are behind Jaworski. And it'll be Montgomery grabbed from behind by Page, and that slowed him down so that Campbell could come up and get him. And the Bears are going to do what they do well, stop the run. We talked about how effective their running defense was, and the Eagles are going to do what they do well, run the football and not take any chances. Montgomery, 17 carries for a tough 56 yards, a little bit better than three yards a carry. They have shut him down pretty well. So it is second and 10 on the 19. Jaworski off the hands of the intended receiver, Wilbert Montgomery. He was one-on-one -on -one with Tom Hicks. Hicks was right with him. The ball was thrown real hard. He, he had very little chance of catching it. Here it is. 
This is a very big sequence for Philadelphia. They have to get out of there. Right. Otherwise, when they punt, the Bears are in very good field position. We had a general rule that we wanted to get at least one first down inside the 20. When we were on offense, moving out inside the 20, at least one first down so that so that we gave our, our team field position. Max Runniger on the sidelines. He'll be ready to punt if Jaworski can't come up with a big third and 10 on the 19. with Montgomery. And Campbell stays in the block. Jaworski throwing it away intended for Montgomery and right there with him was Gary Campbell. Gary Campbell from Hawaii. Good good athlete. Good position. Oh, good Max job. Runniger has averaged a little better than 39 yards a kick. Last week against Houston he averaged better than 45 a punt at his longest during the regular year 57 yards. He gets it away. Waldershide will let it bounce and it keeps rolling with Shara eyeballing it on the eagle roll. Well, and it's inside the 35 to about the 31. You know, Ben, that happens. He got a poor kick. Waldershide couldn't handle the ball, and anytime you let it roll, you're going to lose 15 to 20 yards on an average. So the Bears will put it in play on their own 31, trailing by seven. 24-17 Philadelphia, seven minutes and 41 seconds left in the game, and the Bears have it first and 10 on their own 31. Walter Payton was counseling in the huddle, take it easy. And the Bears trying not to bow to the pressure that's building a veteran stadium. They go slot right, Bashnagel is inside wide. In motion is Williams. And a quick out of screen for Williams. Albrecht trying to block, but there are five green shirts, and he fumbled, and let's see. The Eagles recovered. Yeah, that's, that's a tough break for the Bears. Charlie Johnson. It was a late fumble. He had the ball and started to run with it. Let's, let's take see another look. Yeah, here it is. It's a quick screen to Williams, 22. Now watch him put the ball away and start running with it. Hairston and Wilkes appeared to wrap him up, and as you said, it appeared to be a, a late fumble, yeah. and the Eagles will take it on time or late. They have it first and 10. Inside the 35, they'll spot it at the Bear 33. Good. Ooh. Busted up by Tom Hicks, who almost knocked the laces out of the ball. Tom, he took a punch at it. Yeah, Tom Hicks did something you, that you want your middle linebacker to do. He got real good depth. He can break that pass up better than, than a deep back. Georgia, note now after the fact, the Bears committed only 21 fumbles this year, tying Washington for the fewest fumbles in the NFL. Yep. But then the fumble by Williams on the pass reception, that could be the biggest play of the game now. And as you had mentioned earlier, your, uh, Phipps had just been intercepted eight, eight times in 255 passes. 725 and counting. Second and 10 from the Bear 33. Dan Hampton, double nines, fell oh. on him. The rookie out of Arkansas. Uh oh, a fight. And a fight on the field. Jim Osborne has to be restrained with center Guy Morris. Uh. Osborne and Morris ready to knock holes in each other. Well, it depends on who they call that. The Bear defense came through with a big play. Take them out of field goal range. I don't know whether we can see this. Jaworski good. swallowed up yeah. by Hampton. Good rush by Hampton. Let's see where Morris goes. He makes a drop. Goes head busting with Osborne. Here they are. And then Morris came oh. up and hit him again. Yeah, hit him after the play. You hate to see that after a good play like that. I guess there's so much emotion down there yeah. now. The last few minutes. Well, 7 21 left in the game. They just kept going as the play continued. Uh, Costly penalty. 
Red Cashin, the referee. Unnecessary roughness. Number 68 after the man was down. First down. So that's Jim Osborne. He had been shaken up earlier. Came back and just let his emotions get away on that. So it is first and 10 on the Bear 27. Here comes uh, Tom Hicks back in the game. Neil Armstrong standing somewhat sadly on the sideline after that fumble by Dave Williams. First and 10 Eagles on the Bear 27. They go slot right. Montgomery with Harris walking on flank. Hartenstein brought him down at the 25, and actually, one of the rare times today, Harris was faked out as he tried to block Plank. Doug was able yeah. to get around him. Doug's doing his job there. Uh, the reason uh, Hicks came back in, uh, Virgil Livers was in in that previous play. They, they thought they had third and long and had their nickel defense in there. Then after the penalty, they wanted to come back with their regular personnel. Six minutes and 53 seconds. Second and eight on the 25 for the Eagles. 24-17 Philadelphia. Wilbert Montgomery, Martin Stein, and Page put the squeeze on him, but he got to the 19-yard line. He that, has to get to just about the 17 for a first down. That's a real good call in here. Run the draw, helps you on your passing game, chance to get more yardage than a normal running play. So it is third down. They've spotted the ball on the 20 instead of the 19, so make a third and three. Six minutes and two seconds left in the game. Smith left. And it's Harris hit at the bottom by Plank, and that stopped him. Doug Plank making the initial hit, and then Len Waldeshide putting him away. Now let's see Tony Franklin. See him slipping out of the shoe and the sock. Well, of course, that right foot. And the Eagles are saying, wait a minute, it's only fourth, and it, the players want to go for yeah, it. I think you got to have a measurement here. Yep. It looks that close. Very close. Anytime you're in doubt, you ask for a measurement. And you can see inches to go, and they will go for the field goal attempt. That's the smart thing to do. A field goal, 10-point lead. With five minutes to play, five minutes, 49 seconds to play, should be enough. And especially with a kicker like Tony Franklin, 105 points, 23 field goals during the regular year. Need money in the bank. If you try it and you don't make it, the tide turns. John Shara will hold at the 25. It'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt for Tony Franklin. All these snaps have been a little high. Let's see the snap here. Good snap, good hold, good kick. The kick is good. And the Eagles pick up a big three because of the fumble by Dave Williams and Neil Armstrong now. Ten points down, five minutes and 40 seconds left, and time beginning to run out on the Chicago Bears. Taking a 34-yard field goal, it is 27 to 17 favor of the Eagles and the Bears now will get the ball and they have to do something with it with 540 left in the game. Ricky Watts is not going to be able to make a return but he takes the bounce at the one anyway to the 15 to the 20 and goes out of bounds. Louis Giamona well, able to knock him out of bounds. Uh, Ricky Watts had to feel that ball that was going to drop dead about on the one or two yard line. He didn't want to return that ball. He wanted to go into the end zone, but it, it took a uh, strange hop and it was laying there, so he had to bring it back. And his bring back actually netted two yards instead of first and ten on the touchback at the 20. He got it out to the 22. 27 17 Eagles, 5 28 left in the game. Slot right, Bashnagel and Watts. And Bashnagel in motion. And Wilkes, a delivery sack, and the pass broke.
broken up. Reggie Wilkes came in from the blind side and yeah. really leveled Mike Phipps. Yeah. Well, the play took a little too long to develop. The receiver wasn't open. That's why Mike got hit. Normally, he's not going to have that much time to throw the football. That's why he almost was sacked on the play. Here it is. Now, he's looking downfield, you see? Trying to find somebody open. They're all covered. He held it as long as he could. Down on the field is Noah Jackson, the veteran five years out of Tampa, and it looks like the right leg or knee. Boy, what a what a great guard he is. I I mentioned this earlier, man. I like these guards. What a job they do. There's, there's no better pair of guards in football than Noah Jackson and Rivas Soria. They can do it all. They can pull, they can turn up field, and pass block. Noah Jackson, a veteran, he's played with Baltimore. Three years in the Canadian Football League. They nicknamed him Buddha. They in got Chicago. when they got him out of Canada. That was a heck of a trade. In fact, I was trying to get him, and uh, the Bears got him before we could get him. So Noah Jackson will go to the pitch. Remember, Gary Fensick was lost to the Bears, injured in the second quarter. Lynn Bodine will come in and back up Jackson now, and Dick Vermeil is five minutes and 22 seconds away from the trip to Tampa Bay. His first playoff victory. Remember, he led Atlanta 13 to nothing and lost 14-13, so he's not taking the lead for granted with 5.22 left. Pips low and behind Dave Williams. Well, dragged down by John Punt. What the uh, Eagles did, they went with a three-man rush, and they brought one of their inside linebackers around. Watch it. Here it is. 56, Jerry Robinson forced Phipps out of the pocket. To compare the quarterbacks, Jaworski, 12 for 23, 204 yards and three touchdowns. Phipps, 13 for 27, 142 yards. And the big interception in the end zone by Bobby Howard on a pass intended for Brian Bashnagel. That was a very big play. If I were the Eagles, I'd defense Bashnagel on this third down. It's third and 10 from the 22. Phipps down the middle and he overthrows Ricky Watts and Bobby Howard was right there with him. Well, Phipps was also rushed. Ted Albrecht is shaken up on the play. And the Bears now taking their lumps as time begins well, to run 5-12. Well, they, here, here's what the Bears need now. There's still plenty of time to pull this out. The way Roger Staubach came back last week, of course, there aren't many Roger Staubachs around. I was say, the world knows there's only one of those. But Bob Parsons will be punting to Wally Henry. Doug Buffon will be the blocking back to pick up the strays. Bashnagel and Spivey are the other two men behind the line of scrimmage to block on the punt. The Eagles are not coming. And Wally Henry, a fair catch, standing on his own 42, and right there with him was Kenny Haynes, a Chris Haynes, who was ready to hit him. The NBA on CBS come Christmas Day. Philadelphia versus Washington. Dr. J and Dr. Dunk, Daryl Dawkins. You can't, you can't let them run the clock down. You gotta try to take that football away. First and 10 on the Eagle 42. Carmichael goes left. Wilbert Montgomery uh, blocked by Harris on Campbell. And Campbell did a good job. Yeah. Gary Campbell at stacking and turning the play in he so did. that Hicks could tackle Montgomery. Yeah, good observation, Ben. What he did not do is he did not trade one for one. And you see so many of these linebackers they think they're making a good play. They're taking themselves out. They're making a blocker out of the blocker. And there's Marion Campbell talking to the defensive unit right yeah. now for Philadelphia. Right. Marion does a good job. Be alert and stay in there with it. Be alert and stay in there with it. You can hear Marion talking with 425 left in the game. Second and seven on the 44. 
stay in the block. And Jaworski well, swallowed up by Dan Hampton, now, but he wanted to give the ball off yeah. to Leroy Harris. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised. Second and seven. They got a good running game. Keep the clock going. Run that football. Now that, now that, sh sure, put the pressure on, on the, uh, on the, on the Bears. Now the clock stops. See, now it's starting again. It looked like so. Jaworski wanted to throw to Harris, and Harris turned his back on Jaworski, and now Leroy comes over to the sidelines, and the Eagles are talking to him. Now he has to throw, or, or of course he could run a draw or something like that. But Jim I, Osborne shaken up. Hurt earlier in the game. He's he's done a heck of a job today. I was sorry to see him get that penalty, that critical penalty there, then because he's the guy's going all out, giving everything he has, and looks like his hip. So Jim Osborne goes out. Ron Rydalch will be in there for him, and it is third and 16 for Ron Jaworski and the Eagles. The ball on the Philadelphia 36-yard line. Four minutes and one second left, and now we go into 3:58. There was an injury timeout. Ron Jaworski with 3:47 left, and the Eagles leading 27 to 17. Wow. And fumbled, and the Bears recover again. Wow. I think I, I, Alan think. Page fumbled it after picking it up, yeah. and then the Bears wow. recovered it anyway. They, they, they have now made it possible for the Bears to get back in this ball. Gary game. Campbell came up with the ball. Those last two calls, here it is. It was a, uh, a crisscross type of play. Never had the ball. Montgomery never had, really had possession of the football. And remember, we mentioned the fact earlier that Wilbert Montgomery led the NFL running backs in fumbling, and now a very costly fumble, 329, first and 10 on the Eagle 38. Phipps, no good. And it is intercepted by Herman Edwards. He's at the 30-yard line looking for a block, and he's going to run out of bounds. Wow. Herman Edwards. You might remember the miracle victory against the New York Giants when he picked up the Joe Pisarchik fumble. Now he makes a key interception. That, uh, here it is. He's thrown to uh, Ricky Watts. And it looks like there's, there's bad timing. Now Watts is running a... A stop pattern. Lamaster was in the in the path of the receiver. Well, Herman Big. Edwards finally with Mike Cobb pushing him out of bounds. And the Eagles really get a reprieve. It was first and ten on the 38 for the Bears, and they give up the ball in the end. 317 left, Montgomery. On top of is Ron Rydals playing for Jim Osborne. And of course, time I, becomes an ally for yeah. the Eagles and an enemy for Neil Armstrong and the Bears. Phipps and uh, Ricky Watts didn't communicate on that pattern properly. Interesting uh, for Mike Phipps. He had only eight interceptions all year and two killers today. Right. One by Bobby Howard in the end zone, and now this right. one by Herman Edwards. And much to the delight of Dick Vermeil. And he'd only been sacked 17 times all year. Go to second and five on the 33. Leroy Harris. And the Bears bring him down easily. Rydell's the first man to make contact. The clock showing 225 and counting. And the Eagles in no hurry, and of course, Neil Armstrong thoroughly frustrated, looking at the clock. The scoreboard tells most of it now, 27-17 Philadelphia. And Jaworski calling timeout, coming over to the sideline. So we have two minutes and 15 seconds left in the wild card, and the Eagles are on top of the deck, 27-17.
minutes and 15 seconds left. Wilbert Montgomery with a block from Sizemore and a good play by Doug Plank. Oh, he is playing a whale of a he, game. He's a heck of a football player. I, I really enjoy watching him play. Doug Plank, number 46, making yet another fine defensive play. And we have come to the two-minute Runniger will be punting for Philadelphia with two minutes left. The Bears have two timeouts left. Yeah, they have to go for this. They got to try to block this. Spivey is on the right side. Haynes and McClendon on the left. And now they call Spivey off. So we'll see who can try to get in. The master wants to pick up the stray. Yeah, they got a 10 man rush, looks like. Get in and Runniger, oh. a mile high punt, and he is stretched out on the ground. Flags on the play, and there's a flag. Max Runniger is leveled, yeah. and the Eagles will yeah. keep the ball. That, that's the chance you take. Here it is. That's Gary Campbell. It looked like Campbell was yeah. really kicked more than right. running into Runniger. If you back that up, he, he jumped into Campbell more than uh, being rough. That's right. If you take another that, look at it, yeah, that's. A, Campbell almost got kicked in the chest, fact, but he'll be penalized. In fact, Campbell had stopped, and watch this. Watch this. The ball's already kicked, and now his foot hits Campbell in the chest there. Philly Boom. The right there. Hands. No, Number that... 46 by the receivers. Penalty is declined. Running into the kicker by the receivers. First down. So the Eagles are getting it all now with one minute and 53 seconds left. They get the ball back on the running into the kicker. And with 153, Jaworski and company, a golden opportunity to hold on to the football and go to play Tampa Bay. I've never seen one quite like that in all the years where, where really the, the, the punter ended up kicking Gary Campbell in the chest. The punters in the league are getting so adept, adroit, and going down. Well, there's also an art in avoiding the punter. Uh -huh. Some guys that, that can avoid roughing the kicker, and once in a while, uh, you have this happen, that's a chance you take. So first and 10 on the Eagle 38. Eight, 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 eight. Wildred Montgomery and Mike Hartenstein is on his back as he crossed the 40 to the 41 yard line. The Bears, Neil Armstrong hollering timeout and come over here. And he's hot with just one timeout remaining for the Bears. 142 left in the game. Philadelphia 27 and well, Chicago 17. The reason he's a little bit hot there is that they wasted a few seconds before they took that timeout. Second and seven, the ball just across the Eagle 40-yard line as Neil Armstrong talks to Len Walterscheid. Walterscheid is playing in place of Gary Fensick. Fensick was injured well, in the second quarter and has been through for the remainder of the day and the year. Well, as we've said, these two teams are so even and played so hard and so well today that it's a shame to have either one of them lose. The Bears, if they lose this, they can be really proud. They've done a, they've done a fine job this season. There's a Philadelphia message to John McKay and company down in Tampa. Tampa, you're next. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, the Rams taking in this ball game today know that they have to walk into the buzzsaw against the Dallas Cowboys. And look at that sheepish grin about Dick Vermeil. He's not kidding anybody now at 142 left. Well, he's he's done a great job here in Philadelphia restoring this franchise to prominence. Second and seven on the Eagle 41. And they go to Harris and Leroy on his feet at the 45-yard line before and, going down. And the other thing, he's had the complete backing of Len Tos in everything that, that he wanted to do. One minute and 36 seconds left. And as you can see, the Bears now have no more trump cards to play. And Philadelphia leading 27-17. They have the ball, and they still have three timeouts. That's close to having a lock on a game. The only way you can lose now is if you, if you beat yourself. Uh, the Bears had a good chance when they recovered that fumble, but then on the next play, Phipps threw the interception. Then they get the roughing the kicker penalty, which was a, a tough break. Every Cinderella has a midnight, and it would appear to be that's what's happened to the Chicago Bears, who are three and five at the halfway mark. 
turned it around to win seven out of eight. Still looked like they were out of it. Then had that marvelous offensive show against St. Louis to take it away from the Washington Redskins. And remember, they led in this game. Yeah. But the Eagles have finally come back. And again, the percentages hold up. 68% of the time, the home team wins in the playoffs. And the Bears have kept their poise today. Uh, you got to give them credit there. You know that the C Ben on the Bear helmet that it took George Halas a year to design that C. He didn't want the Chicago Cubs Cup Cub C. He wanted his own C, and uh, finally developed the C that's on the side of the helmet. As you can see, they're putting the foam yeah, rubber the, around the goalpost yeah. for the protection of any runner who might come in that direction. So time out for the moment. And of course, congratulations to an Eagle team that appeared to be frustrated but never down. And this large crowd continued to exhort them. And the Eagles responded to the cheers and have taken a 27-17 lead and the apparent victory. Our thanks to producer Perry Smith, to our director Tony Verna, to Dr. Bob Woods on stats, Bill Friel for his spotting. I'm Ben Scully along with George Allen. We'll be talking to you next week from Dallas. But it is third and three on the 45 for the Eagles. Jaworski to Montgomery. And Wilbert breaking across the 50. Hartenstein and Schmidt bring him down inside the 45 of the Bears. That's his 125 left. That's First it. down. That's his longest run, and that happens when you gang up, get into a gap defense, and try to stop him for no gain. For Wilbert Montgomery, what a workhorse he has been. He could have been discouraged, and a lesser man might have been. He carried 26 times for 89 yards. And, of course, he was a marked man all day. Walter Payton carried 16 times for 67 yards. Payton scored twice from inside the two. And he but had the, one call back. And the day belongs to the Eagles. First and 10 on the Bear 43. Down goes Jaworski. Well, our congratulations to the Bears. It was a long, tough year, and they gave it their best shot. Yeah. And our heartiest congratulations to the Eagles. They're the winners of this wild card game. They'll go on and play Tampa Bay. And for Chicago, they wind down on the 21st game. And for the Eagles, with Jerry Robinson leading the crowd, they've got at least another game to play. Herman Edwards like the Matador and remember it was Herman's big interception that really stopped what might have been a bear comeback and time is running out at Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia three two one and the Bears are history and the Eagles are still alive that's the end of the game the score the Philadelphia Eagles 27 the Chicago Bears 17 the NFL today will be back after this word from your local station They're a good football team. They really are. We're fortunate to win the football game. And uh, there's some things in the second half that went our way. If they'd have gone Chicago's way, they'd have beaten us. They're a good football team in Loco. Tampa Bay is next. And when will you start preparing? Tomorrow morning, first thing. We'll give the coaches this evening off, and then we'll start to work on them tomorrow morning. Dick, I know that you want to go in and talk to the players. I really appreciate your coming by here first. That was awfully nice of you. You go, and I'm going to throw it to Irv Cross with your quarterback. Thank you, Dick. Let's go to Irv now and Lon Jaworski. I hope you can see us down here. We're circled by fans. Of course, we have the winning quarterback, Ron Jaworski, with me. And Ron, there's been a lot of talk about the Eagles underestimating the Bears coming into this game. No, that, Did that really didn't happen. Irv. We knew they had a great football team, and, and I'd like to say that they do. They're a fine football team, great competitors, and they gave all they gave us all we needed today. And they're a fine football team, but a few breaks went our way. We got some big plays out of the passing game. 
and our defense came up with a big play. So we were fortunate to get a win against the fine Chicago Bear football team. Were you able to stay pretty much within your game plan during the course of the game? We really were. Uh, what we like to do is establish a running game and get some big plays out of the passing game, and uh, that's pretty much what happened today. We had a few mistakes, a few breakdowns, but uh, when two good football teams like the Eagles and the Bears get together, that's going to happen. Was there any time during the course of the game when you might have started to second-guess yourself and maybe you felt, uh-oh, we're going to be in for a long day? Well, I felt that way after I fumbled that snap from center, but uh, I didn't want to come to the sidelines and face Coach Vermeil, but uh, fortunately things worked out after that. Ron, thanks a lot. Congratulations well, to you. We'll see you in Tampa Bay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let's go back to Brent Musburger. All right, Irv, thank you so much. And now, Jimmy, let me ask you, Philadelphia goes into Tampa on Saturday. Who would you favor? you got to favor the Eagles by a little bit. Not a whole lot. All right, now how about in the other game on Sunday, the Los Angeles Rams going to play the Cowboys? Well, the Cowboys are a slight favorite. Janie, were you at all surprised by what transpired in the second half? After the second half, I initially got started. Then I wasn't surprised at all because I could see right then and there, within the first few minutes of the second half, that they really knew exactly what they were going to do, and they started doing it very effectively. All right, congratulations to the Philadelphia Eagles, and the NFL Today continues on CBS in just a moment. Your television automatically capture all the subtle shades of difference between this surfer in deep blue, this blue surfboard, and the blue Hawaiian surf? If not, wait till you see color, even color this close on Color Track 1980. Color Track 19. The Chicago Bears will run this next play that we're going to show you over and over and over again. But it will have the same outcome as the original running of it did. It will be called back. But it was a magnificent piece of football by Walter Payton turning the corner and coming down the sideline. But there was illegal motion. And even though Payton got to the one, it came all the way back. Then it was Ron Jaworski, booed by the crowd in Philadelphia, who hit Carmichael the second time. That connection produced six for the Eagles. And Neil Armstrong trying to rally the Bears. Mike Phipps pulled back. Look for Bashnagel on the sideline, and it was intercepted. A big interception by Bobby Howard, which stopped the drive. Then watch Jaworski go to Billy Campfield, the young speedster, who found daylight down the sideline, got a great downfield block, and went the distance, a 63-yard touchdown, making it 24-17, and Dick Vermeil was back in business. Then it was this pass by Phipps out to Campbell. Armstrong protested. He insisted that his player was stopped before he coughed up the ball, a very marginal decision that went against Chicago. Now, the Eagles fumble later, and Chicago had another opportunity, but this pass is intercepted by Herman Edwards, and the Philadelphia Eagles advance in the NFL playoffs 27-17, so it's Tampa Bay and Philadelphia next Saturday on CBS, and then on Sunday it'll be Dallas and Los Angeles. For Ben Scully and George Allen and Jack Whitaker and Jane Kennedy, Jimmy the Greek and Irv Frost, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long for Philadelphia. The NFL Today is a presentation of CBS Sports.